So the Department of State made some changes to the Foreign Affairs Manual to increase the number of E2 visa interviews that are going to be taken in 2023 and going into 2024, which will in effect decrease the, the processing times for the E2 visa. And this is big because during COVID, we saw times for, for processing in Toronto hit nine months, 12 months. Istanbul, Turkey still taking a lot of time. Bogota, Colombia was closed for nearly two years. Santiago, same thing so this update in the foreign affairs manual should really help the processing times for the e2 visa so the state department's clear that consulate officers that are offering e2 visa extension applications there's no need to re-adjudicate the substantiality of the business investment so say you invested hundred fifty thousand dollars in a property management franchise you don't have to go back and show that it was a substantial investment because you already approved for the e2 visa same thing if you are a manager at a business. So imagine you're a, a manager at a, a junk removal business. There's 12 employees. The, the Canadian investor uh, got the E2 visa. He brought his Canadian friend to come down as the manager. They don't have to check again to, to see that the initial investment was a substantial investment. The only exception of this is if there's a change of ownership. So you can't have some sweetheart deal where you sell a, a business to a friend for $30,000 where it should be valued at $200,000. They want to check the substantiality of the E2 visa investment in those cases. Many of these E2 visa petitions are actually for large companies. So think about Siemens, big German conglomerate, a lot of the Japanese banks, French companies like even uh, Club Med here in Miami sponsors E2 visa candidates. Traditionally, the consulates had to review this registration status every five years and they've changed it where a company's registration status should not be terminated solely on the basis that no review has been conducted within the past five years. So it gives a little more leeway to the consulate officer to make a decision and the consulate post to see what a reasonable time frame is to, to check out some of these large E2 visa volume that's going to these companies that backlogged uh, the process for many of our, our clients that were just a single investor seeking the E2 visa because they were put in the same queue when it came to waiting for their E2 visa interview. So overall, pretty positive items. Also, the Foreign Affairs Manual did not make updates for our dual national friends that acquired a citizenship in Grenada or Turkey in terms of how they're adjudicating um, those visas because the law changed in December where if you acquired a, a citizenship through a financial investment, you had to prove that you were domiciled in that country for three years. Big open question is what is a financial investment? If you bought real estate, is that a financial investment? If you donated money to the government and got a citizenship, is that a financial investment? Or maybe your spouse invested and was able to get a, a citizenship through investment, and then you got the citizenship through investment through marriage. So the Foreign Affairs Manual hasn't been updated on that item. We're following it closely at Visa Franchise and really anything that's gonna affect our E2 visa clients for getting that initial E2 visa, or if they do decide to renew their visa, we're tracking those changes. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel and please leave in the comment question if there's other topics you'd like us to review or other top guests that we can bring on, such as leading immigration attorneys, other leaders and in, in, in innovating in the immigration space, as well as franchisors that are working with E2 visa holders.